Hi, I'm Jason O'Donnell. I work here at HashiCorp on the Vault ecosystem team, and I lead our Kubernetes and Vault integration projects. And this talk is Vault and Kubernetes better together. So very quickly, uh, the agenda here, and this is mostly a demo-driven talk, uh, but I'll do I'll go over some a few things before I start some demos. So first, I'll talk about Kubernetes secrets, what they are, and some of the advantages of using something like the Vault Agent Injector, which is a solution by HashiCorp for consuming Vault secrets within Kubernetes. And then I'll do three demos. The first demo will be static secrets, a dynamic secrets, and using transit encryption um, in Kubernetes. So Kubernetes secrets. This is an example uh, of a Kubernetes secret. Um, if, you, if you have any familiar or experience with Kubernetes, you've seen this before. But this secret is called my secret, and it has just one secret value in it. It's a password, and it's a base64 encoded password. So Kubernetes secrets require base64 encoding uh, if you create it this way. So what is the advantage or, or disadvantages of using Kubernetes secrets? First, this Kubernetes secret is a static secret. Some operator has set this up for you ahead of time. Uh, this, this means that if the password were to change, somebody would have to go in there and update it. Um, or if your application is, has been deleted, an operator would have to clean that up. Next, it's space 64 encoded, like I said, and the example showed that. But what this means is that if you don't, you're not using an encrypted etcd storage solution, these, uh, these secrets are only base64 encoded, which is not really protected. So access to the secret is, is not encrypted, um, and it could be leaked in if the etcd backend was compromised. These secrets do support updates, so you can imagine my password changes over time. It's good to update your passwords. But how does my application know that that secret has changed? Um, so Kubernetes will refresh the secret for you, but it, there's, no, there's no mechanism built in for, say, signaling my application to say the secret has changed. You can roll some of these uh, features yourself, such as doing a checksum and then bouncing a pod or, or, or deleting a pod and then re recreating it. Uh, but that seems, uh, especially in like high availability world, um, that's not usually desired for a lot of applications. And finally, there are no leases or time to live with these secrets. So as I mentioned, you know, if my application were to be unemployed or, unde or deleted or uh, removed from um, production, the secrets, if they weren't cleaned up by an operator, would still be out there. So the exposure of, say, a database credential is, is, a, is a non zero um, chance. So the vault agent injector, the vault agent injector is a mutating emission webhook. What this means is that the there is a some piece of software running in Kubernetes, and Kubernetes sends events to it, and the webhook can look at those events and, and make decisions uh, or, or change things. In our case, what we were going to be doing is injecting vault agent containers into pods. So we look at your pod, and if there are certain annotations there, we will um, we will uh, basically mutate that pod spec to include a vault agent and NIC container or and or a vault agent uh, running runtime container. What this allows us to do is to render secrets to paths in, in, in the, uh, a shared memory volume. So basically you ask for a secret and then you might give us a custom template and how to render that secret and we will render it to a, a path that's sh uh, shared on disk um, in a memory volume. Vault Agent also uh, does things like renews the secret and the tokens associated with those secrets. So if you have a secret that can be renewed, Vault Agent will automatically um, update that secret so that it doesn't expire. Um, and if it changes, it will also re-render that template. Uh, and then the tokens associated with these secrets um, or leases will be updated over time. Now, this agent needs to be configured. There's lots of different use cases for the agent. There's lots of different secrets you might consume and different templates. And the configuration for uh, the Vault Agent Injector is done through annotations. 
So very quickly, just showing the, the, how the events happen in Kubernetes. Say you're creating some pod, you send that to Kubernetes, you check it in. It does a uh, authentication to make sure that that request is valid. And then it sends it to the mutating admission webhook. In our case, we take a look at that the request and we find those certain annotations. We then inject or, or change the pod spec to include um, the vault agent container, uh, init and sidecar container. We then check that back into Kubernetes. It, Kubernetes validates that and then moves it along the line to where it eventually gets deployed. So here's an example of annotations that configure the vault agent injector. And this is just a small set of the of the configurations available. First, we're saying agent inject equals true. This means that we want to inject vault agent containers. Next, we want to re request a secret database slash cred slash DB app. And at this location, I might have something like a Postgres username and password to connect to a Postgres database. Now you can see I have this agent inject secret uh, for this specific secret DB creds. So this uh, template I'm, I've created here will create a Postgres connection string and Vault will automatically fill in the blanks for us. So it will generate a username and password by connecting to a Postgres database and then generating and creating an account in Postgres for you. And then finally, the name of the role within Vault that we want to use, which has the policies attached to it to even access the secret. So I'm going to do three demos, like I mentioned earlier, static secrets, dynamic secrets, and the transit encryption. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be giving three demos. We'll be injecting static secrets, we'll be injecting dynamic secrets, and we'll, we'll use the Vault Agent Injector for things other than secrets, such as encrypting and decrypting values using the transit secret engine. Vault is already running and pre-configured for this demo. I can see here that I have two pods. I have a Vault Zero pod, this is the Vault server, and I'm a Vault Agent Injector. This is the mutating webhook that will be mutating pod specs to include Vault Agent containers. Next, I configured Vault with the policy, the secret engines, and the auth methods that my apps and demos are going to use. So I've created a policy called app, and we can look at that policy very quickly. This policy contains access to all the secrets that all of my demos are going to be using. So here we have a the secrets, the static secret, secret slash HashiComp, the database credentials, which we'll be using in the dynamic demo, and then access to transit paths for encrypting and decrypting data in the third demo. Next, I, I enabled the Kubernetes auth method. This allows Vault to authenticate uh, Kubernetes users using their service account. So I, I configured Vault to talk to the Kubernetes cluster. I gave it a token reviewer JSON web token so that Vault can authenticate users who are authenticating with uh, Kubernetes service accounts. I told it where Kubernetes lives. And then finally, I gave it the Kubernetes CA certificate so that Vault can verify the Kubernetes cluster, the Kubernetes uh, server TLS certificates. Next, I created a Kubernetes uh, or a Vault role that maps the Kubernetes service account to a vault role with a policy. So I have a Kubernetes service account named app, and that lives in the app namespace. And I'm going to attach the app policy to this role. This is what my demo will be using when it logs into vault. So for the first demo, we'll be doing static secrets. So I enabled the, the KV secret engine. And I, I put a simple value, a key value at secret slash HashiConf. And there's a key value there, HashiConf equals rocks. So let's inject this secret. So I have a web app here that will basically read this key value from, from the some you know place on the disk and then display it in a web app. It's a very simple application. It doesn't talk to Vault at all. All it does is read a file at a certain path. And we specified that path here with an environment variable. As you can see, though, this only has one container defined in it, just my app container. We'll be patching this deployment definition with the necessary annotations to add the vault agent containers. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be using the app service account, and that's been configured here. So let's start this pod. 
we can see down here below that my app is pod is running, but it says one out of one ready. Currently, we only have one container defined, our app container. There's no agents currently running in this container. So if I look at these patch annotations, we're going to add the following annotations to this deployment. Now, these annotations could be added in the definition itself so that when we create the pod, it just automatically injects these, or we can patch them like I'm doing here on the fly. So to enable the injection, we're going to set agent inject equals true. We're going to say we want this secret secret slash hashiconf, and we're going to be identifying the secret using the kv secret name here. We're going to attach a custom template that tells the vault agent how to render this, this secret in a specific way. So using the kv secret key name here, we're going to attach this following custom template. So at the secret hashiconf path, whatever data you find there, cast it to a JSON object and then render that to disk. We'll be using the Vault Role app, which is what was configured earlier. And then Vault is protected using TLS. So we're going to give it the name of the secret where the, the CA certificate can be found so that our Vault agent can verify Vault's certificates. So let's inject this. I can see down below here that there's now two pods. Our old pod was deleted, and our new pod has come online. It says two out of two this time. So there's at least more than one container. Let's take a look at this. So some things have changed since our initial deployment. We now have an init container, a vault agent init to be exact. This pre-populates the shared memory volume, which was mounted to all the containers in this pod with the secrets that we requested. This is helpful when our application needs secrets at startup and can't wait for the long-running agent container to populate the disk. I can see, you can see here that a volume was mounted, vault slash secrets. This is the memory volume where our secrets will be rendered to. And then the vault TLS uh, volume, this is where our CA certificate can be found, so the vault agent can, can use that to verify vault service certificates. We see our app container here. Nothing has really changed except we've mounted the shared memory volume. This is where the secrets will be found. And we configured this beforehand using this environment variable, saying we expect the secret vault slash secret slash kv secret is where our app secret will be found. And then finally, we have a vault agent container. This is a long running vault agent that keeps our secrets updated and renewed. This is very similar to the init container except it doesn't exit after it renders the secrets, it keeps running. So if we port, if we port forward to this container now, and if we navigate to this, I can see here that my web app has found the secret on disk at, at vault slash secret slash kv secret and it found the value hashiconf equals rocks. And if we exec into this container, and I go to that location, I can see that we have a file here called KV secret. And we can see that in this file, there is a hashiconf equals rocks JSON object. So static secrets are nice, but they don't really change over time. Vault doesn't generate them. They've been configured by a, an operator so that you can consume that secret. And it's really meant for things that don't really change very often. Now, the power of Vault comes with, from dynamic secrets. Vault can, can generate credentials for you on the fly if it's given access to things like databases. So I've already set up Vault with a... a the database uh, secret engine, specifically Postgres. So here you can see we enabled the Vault secret engine for databases, and we configured to talk to a Postgres database. We are, have already set up a role within in Postgres that allows Vault to manage users in Postgres, and we told it how it can connect to the Postgres database. This is currently living. This is currently a pod called Postgres or a service called Postgres in the Postgres namespace. Next, we set up a role for the database engine 
that allows that we give our service account access to. So we're going to call this role DB app, and this is the SQL that will run that Vault will run every time we try and fetch these these credentials. So it's going to create a role with some randomly generated name with a randomly generated password, and that's going to expire at some point depending on the settings of the, the TTL settings of this role. We're going to get, allow it to access our database. We're going to allow it to access a, as an application schema. We're going to give it permissions on that schema, such as the ability to create, to read, to, to write, and to update tables within that schema. And once again, uh, our policy, as I showed earlier, allows us to read this secret. So we expect that our application can read uh, database slash cred slash db app, and this is where it'll get its login string from. So same as before, this app is a little bit, it looks very similar, but it's a little bit different. This time, this web application is going to connect to a database, a Postgres database, and it's going to uh, you know, read some data from tables and display them. So um, same as before, we're using a service account named app. Uh, this is our secret engine app container. Uh, we tell which schema that we're going to be we're getting our, our information from. So the tables where our, our, our the, the schema where our tables live, and then where on disk that secret is going to be found. So at vault slash secret slash dbcreds. Now there's one important thing here. We're going to tell this container to run as the user 100 and the group 1000. And this is done so that every single time this these credentials change or have expired, the agent can automatically go out, grab new ones, and then send a signal to our application say, hey, reload your configuration file. Things have changed. If your application can, can handle that kind of logic, it allows you know, the, the secrets to change over time. And then for Vault to, or the Vault agent to tell your app to, hey, you know, the secrets have changed. Please reload. And this is the reason why we're running this as the user 100 and the, the group 1000 is that the uh, agent and the, my uh, application container are going to be running as the same user. And they're going to be using the same namespace for their processes. This allows the Vault agent to actually send signals to my application container. So same as before, we're going to be adding these annotations on the fly. We're going to say inject. We want to run this as the same user as our Postgres database, or as our uh, application uh, um, container, in this case, uh, 100 and 1,000. We're going to say we want the secrets we want the secret from database slash cred slash db app. We want to use this template to render this secret to a Postgres connection string so that my app can just use this and automatically can connect. So whatever username and password you find at this location, render it into this Postgres connection string so that I can connect to the Postgres database running in Kubernetes. Next, every single time the secret uh, expires and we get a new one, run this following command that sends a sig up signal to my application, which has the process named app. We're going to be using the role app once again, and then the TLS certificates so that we can verify vault. So let's run this. Now let's patch it. You can see down below we only have one container, so this is our app container without any injected agents. I can see now that's two out of two. If we inspect this again, See once again, um, we have a vault agent init container and a vault agent sidecar container with a shared memory volume between all of the containers. So if I port forward to this container again, The app looks a little bit different this time. I've connected to a Postgres database. This is my randomly generated username. This is a Postgres 12.3 server. And it just read this data from a table found in that database. So in this case, it's just a table of different kinds of coffee. Now, if I refresh this app, we can see that the username changed. This, this is because the username or the, the credentials that Vault generated has expired depending on the settings that we set up earlier 
uh, when we configure the, the role for the database engine. So every single time that these change, our app gets a signal and automatically updates it in its configuration within the application. So if I keep refreshing, it, it's staying the same. And at some point, if these credentials are going to expire, our app will get a signal and will automatically update its configuration. So my app didn't crash, it just updated on the fly depending on how often this username and password has changed. And if I exec into this container, and I go once again to Vault Secrets, I can see I have a, a file here called dbcreds, and it has a Postgres connection string with a username and a password and how to connect to, to Postgres. And if I look at the process tree here, I can see, you know, these are all sharing the same process uh, namespace. So I can see my app process and I can see the Vault agent running. So we've we've showed secret or static secrets and we showed dynamic secrets. But Vault does other things uh, such as encryption as a service using the transit secret engine. So once again, this has already been set up. You can see here at the very bottom of this configuration script, uh, I've enabled the, the transit secret engine. And I've written a key. I've told Vault to generate a key at this location, transit slash key slash app. This is the key that Vault will use in order to encrypt and decrypt data. And I've already configured the policy to read uh, the following path. So transit encrypt app. This is what my app will use to encrypt values it sends along the vault. And this is the, the uh, path that my app will use to decrypt uh, values that were already encrypted. So my app doesn't have to worry about managing any keys. Vault does that automatically for me. So there's just a few different annotations this time. But first, we'll look at the pod. So we have this deployment. It looks the same as before. We have one container. This time it's using a different image for the transit example. It's also going to connect to a Postgres database. So it's going to read username and passwords for some table in Postgres, encrypt the passwords, and then decrypt the passwords using transit. So very similar as before, our service account is named app. We're sharing the process namespace. The difference, though, is with the annotations. So this time we've added two different annotations. Since our, our application is going to actually be using Vault's transit service, it's semi-Vault aware. It knows how to talk to Vault, but it doesn't need to worry about things like logging in or renewing uh, secrets or tokens. Um, all it really needs to do is, is say, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and decrypt this value by sending it to some Vault URL. And the Vault agent, using two different annotations here, has enabled a listener so that containers within this pod can now use that, that container to proxy request to Vault without having to use tokens. The agent is already configured to log into Vault and use its token, which already has access to the transit paths. So my app, although it's semi-Vault aware, doesn't need to worry about the specifics of Vault. All it really needs to know is if I ask this agent container running on the local host to to encrypt this and decrypt this data, I don't have to do anything else other than just send values to the agent. This is really nice because renewing tokens and fetching secrets can result in a lot of logic for my application, but all I really have to do is just you know send data to this agent without worrying about anything else. So same as before, you know we're using a Postgres database. We're going to connect to Postgres, but this time we're going to enable caching. So Vault agent with caching enabled will automatically renew and fetch secrets for you. So if my application was fetching, trying to fetch a secret really often, uh, the agent wouldn't actually send those requests to Vault. It would just give whatever is cached. And when that secret changed, the Vault agent would go out and get it and cache it so that those requests automatically um, get cached and, and return to the user without them even knowing. So this takes a lot of pressure off, of, off the Vault server. And then we're going to say that we want to... Uh, for requests coming from within this pod, use the auto auth token that my Vault agent already has enabled. So my app container doesn't actually need to do a login. It doesn't need to send along a JSON web token to authenticate the Vault 
the agent has already configured itself to do that. And then same as before, you know, we're running the same user as our container. We're getting a Postgres connection string. We're setting signals when that when that secret changed we're using the app role, and we're getting these certificates from this secret so that we can verify Vault server certificate. So let's run this. And we'll just patch it with these annotations. Same as before, we can see uh, we have two out of two containers running. This whole uh, pod has been destroyed. So now if we port forward to this, I can see here I connected to a Postgres database using this username to Postgres 12.3 server. And I've read values from some table that had a username and passwords. For the passwords, I encrypted those using Vault Transit, Transit Encrypt app. And these are the encrypted values. These could be now stored in a database or, or some other storage uh, solution. And then my application, all it did just to demonstrate this was take those encrypted values and then send them back to Vault using the decrypt path to get back the actual plain text values. So my app didn't have to think about you know, what key is used to decrypt these. Vault does all that for me. So that's my talk. Um, if you want to know more, such as installing Vault on Kubernetes and managing Vault, we have a project Vault Helm, and it can be found in, in HashiCorp slash Vault Helm. And if you want to know more about the agent injector, there's the Vault K8 project, Vault K8. Thank you.